Over the last several months, the team at UAV Onyx has been working on software version 2.4.1, which includes many of the enhancements you've asked for, as well as features we want in the instrument that we fly in our airplanes. This video introduces several of these enhancements. Version 2.4.1 is available now for experimental aircraft. It can be found online for free at uavionics.com support. There you'll find the software as well as a service bulletin detailing the installation process. Also, you'll find an updated installation manual, pilot guide, and quick reference card. All are made available to the public for free, no registration required. Version 2.4.1 will be made available for certified aircraft upon FAA approval. As you fly with this new software, we encourage you to reach out to our support team with any questions or feedback that you might have. Now, without further delay, let's dive into the features of 2.4.1. We're pleased to announce the release of our newest AV30 accessory, the AV-APA. Short for the analog port adapter, the AV-APA adds two channels of analog output to the AV30, which allows it to drive heading information into an analog autopilot. The AV-APA commands the autopilot to follow a heading bug, GPS track bug, GPS desired track, or bearing to a GPS waypoint. GPS steering, GPSS, will be available as an additional software unlock with the release of our next accessory, the AVHSI. Installation information and example wiring diagrams for the AVAPA are included in the latest release of the AV30E installation manual, REV-H. Operating information can be found in the AV30 Pilot's Guide. The AVAPA currently supports STEC System 20, 30, 40, and 50 autopilots, Please contact the UAVionics technical support or sales teams to request support of additional analog autopilots. Version 2.4.1 continues to support serial communication with TRIO and AeroCruise autopilots. With thousands of AV-30s flying and likely over a million accumulated flight hours, we've had some reports of degraded attitude performance during certain conditions. Over the last several months, we've flown flight tests in a variety of aircraft and performed numerous simulations to improve the robustness of our attitude calculation. Version 2.4.1 improves attitude robustness, whether impacted by installation error, movement during alignment, or the unit's calibration. With version 2.4.1, the AV-30 now displays a full flight plan on the DG ARC page instead of just displaying guidance to the next waypoint. The AV-30 will display full flight plans from panel-mounted navigators outputting the aviation serial format, as well as aviation portable GPS outputting the GPWPL and GPRTE sentences. No configuration change is necessary in the AV-30 to enable this you may need to configure your portable GPS to output the previously mentioned sentences. See the AV30E installation manual, REV-H, for more details. We've updated the transponder control interface to reduce the number of button presses necessary to change a squat code. Previously, to change a squat code, you'd click your center button, select the digit to edit, change it, deselect it, move, select the next digit to edit, change it, etc. Now the center button press will auto advance to the next digit. So let's say we are assigned a 4224 as a squat code. Dial in your first digit, press to advance, 2, 2, 4. That easy. Likewise, if you want to change to VFR, select it, Right button is a quick change to Squawk 1200. If you'd like to change the transponder mode, bring up here, you'll see VFR is highlighted now. That was that quick set to 1200. A press and hold will move you over to mode, and then single presses will cycle through your different modes. There have been times where ATC has asked me to change squat code at the least convenient time possible. Currently, to do that, you need to switch over to the transponder control page and set that here. To streamline that interface, we've now added squat code as an overlay that can be added to any of your pages. So I'm going to just put my squawk in the bottom left corner of the AI right here. And if that squawk is displayed there, now the ability to change that squawk. Prior AV30 versions offered three DG views. 
or traditional DG page that was tied to the DG, an HSI view, slave to GPS track, and an ARC view, slave to GPS track. In version 2.4.1, we've added three additional DG page choices. Our traditional DG page, slave to GPS track, the HSI view, driven by DG heading, and an ARC display, driven by DG heading. Choosing a DG-based page will provide magnetic heading when the AV30 is aided by an AV mag. Choosing a GPS track-based page will use your current ground track provided by your GPS. Our Century ADS-B receivers offer a built-in carbon monoxide detector. The audible alarm is effective, but we wanted to add another layer of safety by getting the alert into the pilot's primary field of view and into the aircraft's audio panel. When a Sentry ADS-B receiver is connected to the AV-30 through an AV-Link, carbon monoxide level is available as an overlay. Below 75 parts per million, the overlay will display OK, letting you know that communication is established with a carbon monoxide sensor. Above 75 parts per million, the overlay will provide a warning with the registered parts per million displayed. Above 200 parts per million, an audible and visual alert will trigger. Pressing the center button will dismiss the alert, though at these levels, immediate pilot action is required. The visual and audible alert will trigger whether or not the CO is currently an active overlay. For our European friends, we've added kilometers per hour and hectopascals. To configure your AV30 to use these, enter the install menu and select KPH as the indicated airspeed units or HPA as the barrow units. We know in Europe it's common to switch to standard pressure at lower altitudes than in the United States. To streamline this for our European customers, we've added a quick standard button that quickly sets the standard pressure. Likewise, you can switch back to your local altimeter setting by pressing the button again. An important step of AV mag setup is to specify the orientation of the mag, either label up label down, wires aft, or wires fore. The initial release made several options available. Knowing that our users are installing mags in some pretty tight locations, we've added the remaining orientation options. Additionally, in 2.3.9, excessive movement during AV mag initialization results in a nuisance no mag flag. We've improved the AV mag initialization sequence to resolve this. Two point three point nine and before would not display a density altitude below negative one thousand feet. For our pilots flying in really cold locations, we've increased the density altitude range. We've added a two point trim option to the indicated airspeed, where you can trim the airspeed at a low speed and a high speed. To do that, you would connect your AV thirty to a calibrated air data test set. Trim at a low speed, increase the airspeed by at least 70 knots, and trim at a high speed. Version 2.4.1 includes several other smaller changes that can be found in the full release notes in the service bulletin. This service bulletin is also where you'll find detailed instructions on installing 2.4.1 and performing the post-installation calibration and checkout procedures. Please review the service bulletin before proceeding. To briefly summarize the installation steps in the service bulletin, 2.4.1 can be installed in two ways, using a serial connection or wirelessly with the AV link. If your wiring harness already has a serial pigtail, connect it to a Windows PC using one of the serial cables recommended on our website. Use the AV update tool to load your new firmware. You'll know it's complete when the tool shows update complete in the lower left. If your AV30 harness does not already have the serial pigtail, instructions for creating one are in the installation manual. To use the AV link, connect your PC or mobile Wi-Fi to the AV link and select AV Display Software Update, and then load the new software in your AV30. A pop-up will appear indicating that the update is complete. Once the new software is loaded on your AV30, 
be sure to follow the post-installation calibration and checkout procedures in the Service Bulletin. Overall, we hope you're as excited to get this new release as we are to release it. Again, this release is available for experimental aircraft today for free at uavionics.com support. Please reach out to our support team with any questions or feedback. Until next time, fly safe.